with you on shared revenue. He's willing to remove provisions in Milwaukee. Are you willing to do the same? A wild week in Madison and a wild week ahead after late nights and early mornings, an agreement on the sweeping shared revenue bill between Republican leaders and the governor. J.R. Ross is standing by with new reporting, but first, how we got here. Just before noon Wednesday, Governor Tony Evers in Racine, confident after a private meeting with Republican leaders. I'm very, very hopeful that uh, we will have a, a good outcome by the end of this week. Then, just hours later, inside the Capitol. But if we do not get a deal this week, I think we should strip out all of the Milwaukee things. Anything talking about sales tax. Yeah, I mean, the sales tax would be gone. Anything that affects Milwaukee. Assembly Speaker Robin Voss intensifying the timeline. By night's end, both he and Senate Majority Leader Devin Lemihew issuing a firm ultimatum to the governor. Accept their last and final offer or the Milwaukee provisions and the ability for the city and county to raise its sales tax would be gone. We are excited to announce today that um, we have an agreement. Thursday afternoon, the agreement. Voss, Lemahue, and the governor announcing a sweeping package. Milwaukee and Milwaukee County no longer needing voter approval to raise the sales tax. Just a two-thirds majority from the Common Council and County Board to help fund unfunded pension obligations and to maintain and increase law enforcement in the city. Under the plan, Milwaukee could raise its sales tax by 2%. Republicans saying bringing in an additional $184 million annually. The county by 0.4%, an additional $76 million more each year. We came up with a way to allow the city of Milwaukee and the county of Milwaukee to deal with a pension issue that's been happening over the last couple of decades on their own. We're not bailing them out. We're giving them a tool to help themselves. A number of Milwaukee-specific provisions remain. Stipulations on spending alongside education provisions negotiated. More money for both K-12 through public schools and school choice. The entire package now needing approval from lawmakers. Speaker, do you have the votes in the Assembly w without the referendum? We had a caucus this morning. I think there is some heartburn in our caucus about getting rid of the referendum, but I think there are enough conservative wins that while I would have preferred the referendum to be in there, I think it's a reasonable trade-off and I think we'll end up getting the votes. What are the concerns among the lawmakers, though, who are not there yet? You know, we're, we're going to talk to all the lawmakers, all the members of our caucus, and I talked to the minority party and I think uh, some of them will get there. J.R. Ross is editor of WISPolitics.com, our editorial partner. J.R., always great to have you here. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. So walk us through what happens next with all of this. So the first things we're going to see are these bills, uh, both the shared revenue bill and the uh, choice charter package will be in separate legislation outside the budget. They will move in tandem. Um, Governor Rizzo has made that clear. He wants them both to come about the same time because this is a deal that requires both to be there in the way they are understood by both parties to make it work, right? The Assembly and Sunday expected to take this up Wednesday as of now. JR, you and I both asked Speaker Voss and Senator Lemahue if they had the Republican votes to pass this. It wasn't necessarily a resounding yes. Where does all this stand with Republicans who may vote for this, Democrats who may vote for this, and how they get the votes to pass this this week? Going into this week, um, Repub people I talked to have been watching really five lawmakers in the Senate, right? Um, kind of mostly Milwaukee, Southeastern Wisconsin members. But then I started hearing more grumbling about outstate Republican senators saying, why would I support this quote unquote bailout for Milwaukee? Now, the backers of this deal have pushed back very hard on the idea of bailout. To them, this is a lifeline, right? You're giving Milwaukee the option, the opportunity to address its pension obligations. But there's this grumbling of, why are we doing this for Milwaukee? It's a bad vote for us as Republicans. If we can't get Democrats on board. Will there be Democratic votes? Maybe. Robin Voss said there should be if you want to back your governor. But the reality is Democrats don't like the policy in this budget or the share revenue bill, right? Things being imposed upon Milwaukee, the local governments. That's a tough sell. Uh, but I'm kind of watching to see, does anybody kind of come along with it? And two, do you need votes in the Senate caucus? That's the one I really, really watch is the Senate because that's where the math is a little bit tougher than the Assembly. Do you need votes in the Senate passes the bill? Lemahue said you will not, he will not, but let's just watch and see if that uh, pledge comes true. Who are the winners and the losers here? Well, education is the clear winner, all right? So both public education and uh, the voucher system. On the one hand, Governor Evers is pledging to sign one of the biggest boosts for the voucher system since it was founded. For public education, we have seen Republicans the last few years 
putting state money into this system. Remember, you're funded by a mix of state tax dollars and property taxes. The more state money you put in that system, the less you can raise in property taxes. Republicans have focused on trying to use state dollars to drive down how much property taxes are being used by schools. This is actually gonna allow an increase in spendable money. It's a win for both. And the reality is, it's a win for the capital and how it works. If you talk to Republicans right now, I'll tell you that they won this deal. Everybody wins by giving something up. It's how government used to work, but hasn't for years in Madison. A lot to look forward to in this week ahead. J.R. Ross, editor of WISPolitics.com. J.R., like always, thank you. Anytime. Up next, former President Donald Trump indicted again. And in Wisconsin, a new bipartisan group is launching, targeting election deniers and promoting election education. The group's new leader, former state Republican lawmaker Kathy Bernier, is standing by next.